going on, guys? Heath and Tracy. Hi, guys. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about our new marriage material. Yes. So I thought this was a good topic to kind of go over because we've got to get to a point where if you're thinking about marriage or remarriage, you've got to make sure you're in order. We're always worried about what the other person is doing. Right. right. And um, it, it's important to not so much worry about what the other person is doing, but start to work on yourself first. So we're going to start with five different ways. Five ways, yep. Yeah. Five ways to know if you are marriage material. Number one. Give your potential partner time to grow. <laughs> how, so, long you, how long did you give me the time to grow? Like 20 years? You have to sort of trust and know that, hey, you're on this journey together. It's going to be fine. You just keep going. You love in spite of. I still love you. Right. And I still yeah. love you too. Yeah. I still love you. <laughs> So uh, the first one that we just talked about was give your give your potential partner time. And sometimes it could be, especially when you're younger in your marriage, it could be, hey, we need to finish a degree. Somebody has a degree to finish. Uh, maybe you know you're working on uh, an advanced degree. Maybe uh, they have some other things that are happening, and you have to sort of just be patient with a partner, give them time to to grow and mature and complete whatever it is that they need to do. So I think that's important too. Okay, constantly make mental notes and evaluate the current relationship. Um, you know, evaluate their personal daily, weekly, whatever, however you interact with them. Evaluate that that relationship and how you interact with one another. Like we were just saying, he and I have had melting issues in the last couple of weeks. Just, just not vibing. Sometimes it's just not vibing. And you have to see how that person reacts. So you do want to evaluate how that person reacts. So that's that's another way of discovering if you are marriage material or if the other person is marriage material. Yeah. So it's important to just evaluate that. Check their behavior. How angry do they get? Are they getting really, really angry or are they just getting slightly angry? Do they get angry at all? So these are things that you need to evaluate to figure out, yeah, you do, but I'm not. So <laughs> you, have to, you have to evaluate that and see if that is going to correlate with how your personality is right. and if that's going to work for you. So that's something else you can determine if you are marriage material or not. Or if the other person is marriage material. Right, right. Because you're evaluating yourself, but you're also evaluating your partner. Right? Yeah. Or, or conversely, you're evaluating your partner, but during the course of that, you need to be checking out yourself. Right. Material. If you can't handle things, if you can't get through things, if you can't get through... Like I'm a little feisty. feisty. Yeah, I'm a little feisty. feisty. You want to really consider things like uh, habitual things, like maybe drug use, or sometimes people snow smoke. If that bothers you, you need to figure out if you're going to be able yep. to deal with that. Do people drink? That's a great point. Yep. Do people? Is that does that person drink? Is that something you're able to handle? Is that something you're going to be able to uh, walk through life with? You want to talk about those things. You want to talk through those things. You want to talk through the things that may be quirking you out a little bit. And it's about having the conversation first, not after you get married, guys. Right. Um, number three. What's number three, guys? Actually, number two. So, no, we did number two. No, I don't know. Maybe I've got these, well, I've got these numbers wrong. In my mind. Okay, so this one is three. Yeah. Um, you need to add skills. Add like some skills. Basic <laughs> partnership skills. Can you clean the house? Okay, can we say that again? Can you clean the house? Do you know how to clean? On a regular basis, guys. Can you prepare a meal in your house? On a regular basis. <laughs> and it's not, I mean, if you're balling and you want to eat out of time and you're balling and you can get somebody to come in and clean, hey, that's awesome. And if you don't have this, because there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody didn't um, grow up in that type of atmosphere. Everybody didn't grow up with that. But I think it's important to marriage because sometimes the dumb stuff puts pressure on your marriage. Looking to be in a marriage, it's important to pull somebody in to help you. Find a friend that you, every time you go over their house, it's spotless. Say, hey, you know, I really need some help with this. I'm really trying to try to get this part of my house, whatever part of that house is clean. I need help yeah. because there's something about inviting someone over to your home and, and it's not presentable. And that says something. And I know people go through things and that's, that's, that's fine. Or you live with other people who aren't as clean as you are. But in order to move through a new relationship with someone, let's start with cleanliness or at least tidiness, or at least knowing how to get it done. Because when other pressures come in your marriage, you don't need to argue about who's going to clean the kitchen. You don't need to argue about who's going to wash the dishes. You don't need to argue about why the bathroom 
it ring is in there. You don't need to argue about the dumb stuff. So if both of you know how to use these skills, it's not an issue. You also want to add financial skills. Now, this is something that took Keith and I a long, long time in our marriage to figure out who was best at that. And to be honest with you, I think maybe in the last two years, we've kind of figured out who's better at that. But what we've also figured out is we're actually better together with it. It's like if, if I'll do one part of it, I'll do the organizing and the checks and the balances and I'll get everything like teed up for the month and then he'll execute. I'm not as good as, at executing as he is. He's going to remember more so than I am. I'm good at setting up the details of what's due for the month and how much is due and if we need to do something different this month and then he's good at executing. So that's something. Now when I say together and, and when we're talking about these things guys, we're talking about prior to me. We want to make sure you understand that you are taking care of your business, your cleanliness of your home, you cooking for yourself, not cooking for somebody you're not married to. That's not what we're advocating here. What we're saying is as a single person, as someone preparing for marriage, you want to make sure that you have your stuff together so that you can push forward in your marriage together and not have to worry about these little things. Because this little stuff, if it's not right, it's going to mess you up. The other thing is your debt, your debt plan. Make sure that's straight. And we're still on number three, guys. We're talking about skills. So we're talking about housekeeping skills, cooking skills, financial skills, which includes savings and debt. Um, I think we were really set up well from our parents after we graduated from college. We didn't have much debt. We've never really had much debt. So that's really, really helped us a lot. A lot of kids or young, younger people these days, they come out with debt. So you've really got to take into account. Don't spend $30,000 on a wedding. We have another video on that. Don't spend $30,000 on a wedding if you got $30,000 worth of debt. It doesn't make any sense. It's going to put pressure on your marriage. It's unneeded pressure. No, if you have it, that's a different thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about those of us right. that have it. And there are those of us that have it. Right. That's not what we're saying. But if my parents are going to stroke me a check for $30,000 for a wedding and I had fifteen dollars or $20,000 in debt and my to-be had that much, I'd be like, hmm, can I take half of this and pay that off or pay my car off or something? So you just really want to think about this and have those skills going into the marriage. So if your debt is together, if your savings is together, if your financial skills are together, if your cooking and your cleaning is together, you might be marriage material. Might be. Um, one more thing in the skills part. What do you think it is? You gotta have that spiritual life. Spiritual life gotta be tight. Woo! You gotta have that spiritual life tight, guys. It's it's so important. It's going to come after you. It's ish, whatever you want to call it, the evilness out here will come after you and your marriage. It'll come after your children. It'll come after your job. The people in your job will show up, say crazy stuff to you. Your loved ones say crazy stuff to you. Your family members say crazy stuff to you. So it's just important that you stay connected to your source. Our source is Christ, okay? A number one in our lives. My life first. I connect daily, you know. And if I don't do that, it's, it can get real ugly. Yep. It can get ugly on my job. It can get ugly in my home. So it's important that your spiritual life is together. Yep. If you're still searching, if you're still not sure who that is for you, you might not be marriage material. The next one is finding joy as a single person. Mm, that's a great one. That's a great one because uh, um, sort of dovetailing off some of those earlier points that we're making, right? And so that being happy, being joyful is so key and so important because you want to, you, you're going to bring that into your relationships, right? So everything that you're doing, you have, if you're not joyful, then you need to make the decision to be joyful. Right. You need to make the decision to be happy, right? So if that means, you know, connecting spiritually, if that means that you need to get some happy medicine, you need to read some books, you need to uh, engage. Volunteer, share your time with others, right. find ways to not feel so lonely. Mm -hmm. Find ways to not focus on your yeah. singleness so much. Because it's there. not about to get out there and help and be and do for others. Yeah. And find yourself in happiness. I think um, both of the kids and I have talked about this before. We were both at a place when we met and decided to marry that I was cool. I was cool being single at that time. And I think you said you were the same. It wasn't like we were looking for something more to be added. You have to be whole before you join with someone else. So it's important that you find that and you are settled and happy with that before you start adding someone else into your life. So if you are happy being single, you might be there. <laughs> the last one is delete something. 
So we talked about adding skills. We we talked about uh, being happy with yourself. We talked about um, making sure that you're you're okay with the other person that you're considering with their their quirks and everything, and giving that person time to grow. Um, the the one thing that most people don't do before they get together with another person is they don't delete some things. And when you say okay, delete what? Delete what? You want to delete toxic people that in your life sometimes when we're single we have cool friends you know we're just kind of used to that person you know that person okay they rub people the wrong way but we don't care they don't bother us I've known them for 20 years I've known them for 10 years I've known them since um, third grade or whatever and they cool with me so oh I know they're weird and I know they can be a little itchy or whatever but they're cool with me if you're trying to join your life with someone else that person probably has to go and you know these people. So you need to remove toxic people from your life to move on your life with another person. Yep. That includes family members too sometimes. You know? Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing with family members that you can't remove them necessarily from your life. But well, you can distance yourself. You can yeah. do whatever it is that you need to do to have the, the proper headspace and uh, you know set those boundaries. The other thing you want to remove is bad thought processes. Bad thought processes. Okay, yep. negativity. And you can't bring negativity in. You've got to remove all those little bad, you know what they are, those little bad thoughts and, right. and thinking and everything that you do. You've got to get rid of that. You've got to move to a different place. You're going to pull someone else into your life. Yep. So if you're in a good place, you feel good as a single person, You are your, your finances are together, your house is together, you're, uh, you don't have much debt, you are spiritually together, have a conversation with your significant other and feel good about their little quirks and everything and you've given them time to grow into where they want to be you might be marriage material right and I think in closing I want to say no one will be perfect nobody's perfect I'm not perfect nope I'm not perfect and as much as you guys think he is this guy is not perfect no <laughs> but I will say this he's perfect for me that's so right. that's what you want to think about when you're considering someone is he perfect for me? Right. Is she perfect for me? Can yep. I deal with all that little crookedness? Mm -hmm. um, and I tell newlyweds or people getting ready to get married all the time, whatever you love about them is going to just go through the roof. Yeah. It's going to increase. And whatever you hate about them is going to go through the roof too. Yeah. And it's just everything is magnified in marriage, guys. Yeah. I want to say thank you. Thank you. For joining us. Our, yeah. We also have a Facebook working on the tweet thing. The snap is what we're working on. We're working on snap and we have fun musically from yep. time to time. So we're having fun with this guys. If you have any ideas about subjects, please send them our yeah, way. Our email address is Heath and Tracy TV at gmail.com. That's right. That's right. Thank you. We love you. And remember these three things. Connect to God. Connect to family. Connect to your spouse or significant other. Okay. We love you. Thank you. Bye bye.